Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7b force and momentum practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, it helps our channel a lot. So let's go ahead and review the problem. Please uh, feel free to copy the problem on your notebook. So we have two objects, A and B, and they both have some initial momentum, which is represented below with an accurately drawn vectors. These two objects, A and B, collide, and the final momentum of object A uh, is given as a vector. There are no external forces acting on this system. The two things that we have to do is first uh, figure out the final momentum vector for B, which is not given to us in the instructions, and then B, we have to draw force vectors of force B on A and A on B also in scale. So as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. So I have the drawing and I even made a grid that looks exactly the same as the one in the problem. So um, we do have an initial momentum here, initial momentum here. We have one of the finals and we do need to write here what this magnitude is. And then we also need to figure out what's going on with the forces. So I uh, also decided to add a momentum chart over here because, you know, we, we, we do like our momentum charts in this channel. So we do need to go ahead and, you know, figure that out as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is a momentum chart uh, is usually better if you can have it on X and Y components because vector addition works uh, X with X and Y with Y. So instead of writing magnitudes over here, I'm actually going to write my vectors in X and Y component. So A is just something like this, B is something like this, but in terms of X and Y components, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, X, positive because it's going west, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, north. So like this. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, but this one is negative because it's going uh, west, and, um, oh, I said west for this one, right? Well, this one is positive because it's going east. This one is negative because it's going west. And then just one, two going up. So like this. Now I need to add this up. And that will be our, our total initial momentum. Four plus minus four is going to be equal to zero. And four plus two is going to be equal to six. So this is just gonna be a total momentum of 6 going up. Now the problem is very explicit in that there are no external forces. So because there are no external forces, this is a zero, which in vector form is just zero, zero. And we uh, and this row basically has to add up this way. And this means that I'm just going to copy this arrow and just put it over here. So this is also zero and six. Now we do have the final momentum of A. So the final momentum of A is zero on X and just one, two ticks going up like this. And from all of this information, we can figure out what the final momentum of B should be. So this plus this have, has to add up to zero so zero goes here. So that zero plus zero adds up to zero. And then two plus something has to be equal to six, and that would be two plus positive four. So this is going to be zero and four. And this is basically gonna be our final answer for part A of this problem. So we just need to uh, draw it. So we just need to do start here and then just go one, two, three, four. So we just go four, it's going up because it's positive, like this. And then in terms of magnitude, because this vector is all just going up, that means that if I use Pythagoras theorem, four square, uh, square root, that's just gonna be four, right? So this is our final answer. So now we have to figure out 
the force that B puts on A and the force that A puts on B. And for that, we need to figure out this part of our momentum chart. So let's just go ahead and do that first, and then I'll explain why this is important. So this row has to add up, right? That means that 4 plus something has to add up to 0. Well, that will be negative 4. 4 plus something has to add up to 2. Well, that would be negative 2. Minus 4 plus something has to equal to 0. Well, that would be positive 4. Uh, positive 2 plus something has to equal to 4. Well, that would be a uh, negative 2. No, positive 2. And as you can see, this column adds up to 0 as well. So this is just uh, negative, negative, so something like this. And this is positive, positive. Oh, well, it just has to... Oh, no, negative, negative. So negative, negative is a little bit to the south, a little bit to the west. And then a little bit north and a little bit east. There we go. So now, these are our momentum vectors. So our change in momentum vectors, which um, that is also our impulse. So I'm just going to go ahead and write those down. Delta P for A is negative 4, negative 2. Delta P for B is 4 and 2. But we also know that by definition, delta P is equal to the net force times delta T. Now in this case we only have two objects on our system and the only interaction that these objects have is with each other. So if A is feeling a net force on this direction, that is because B applied a force on A in this direction. So this is force by B on A times delta T. Again, the same goes for B. So if B is feeling a net force on this direction, then that means that A applied a force on B in this direction. So this is force by A on B times delta T. So I'm just going to go ahead and solve. Um, so force by B on A is equal to negative 4 divided by delta t, and delta t is 0 0.5. And on the y-axis, that would be negative 2 divided by 0 0.5. And this would be um, eight, negative 8 and um, negative 4 newtons and force by a and b that would be um well it has to be equal and opposite because of newton's law so this is just um eight and four newtons you can also do the exact same procedure and you will find that this is exactly the same okay so the first thing that i have to do is uh write the magnitudes so my magnitudes, I just need to, well, let's just draw them first, I guess. So I really hope that I have enough space. Okay, B on A, I'm writing on red. So B on 8 is negative 8. I really, I'm not going to have enough space. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be a vector... that looks like this. And then the other one is going to be, um, let's see, one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four. So the other one is going to be a vector that looks like this. So this is the vector, but now we just need the magnitudes. The magnitudes are going to be exactly the same, but let's just go ahead and figure out what they are. So the magnitudes for both of them is going to be 8, um, 
squared plus four squared take the um, square root of that and that is going to be 8.94 so that would be 8.94 here 8.94 here you know because of Newton's third law they have the exact same magnitude they just have uh, opposite directions well I really hope that this problem was useful to you guys if it was please make sure to leave a like it really helps a lot and I will see you guys in our next video bye bye